James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, followers of Jesus Christ are changing America. And more and more Christians are rising up, whereas before, the majority of Christians didn't even vote in this country. But there are those at work to circumvent your voice by dictating a far left agenda through the courts. The progressive left has since 1965 and even prior to that used the Supreme Court as an ability to legislate from the court. We will expose the effort to take power away from we the people and share a plan for action on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. America's founders viewed the courts as being the weakest of the three branches of government. But in the 20th century, the far left discovered that they could evade the Constitution and skip past the hard work of convincing voters and instead accomplish their goals through the fiat of court orders. That's how we got abortion on demand, the banning of school prayer, the overturning of sodomy laws and same-sex marriage among many other leftist policy preferences. For that reason, the courts have become the brass ring of American politics. On today's program, we will expose the strategy and tactics being used to hijack our courts, which has the effect of rendering your vote totally irrelevant. And we'll show you what you can do to help stop it. You'll also see how the courts are being used to take away from our Christian foundation. We begin with an investigation into the contentious battle over the courts. Chairman, if, if we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. The American people Chairman, I move to adjourn. September 2018, at the U.S. Senate hearings for the confirmation of Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, more than 200 arrests of demonstrators there were made, and many senators interrupted the proceedings, the first one even happening within the first minutes of the hearings. You are out, you're out of order, I'll proceed. We cannot possibly move forward, Mr. Mr. Chairman. You're not going to be able to put together the kind of compromises in government you need to run the country if everybody is threatening everybody else. Or, you know, we've seen in the uh, Supreme Court hearings of these paid demonstrators coming into the committee room and screaming. And uh, one uh, Democrat said, that's the voice of democracy. Really? Screaming in a committee room? That's, that's how we're going to run things now? You can't run a government that way. The reason for the unhinged behavior of the left during the Kavanaugh hearings? It's about power. So the progressive left has since 1965 and even prior to that used the Supreme Court as an ability to legislate from the court. We look at Article 1, Section 1 of the U.S. Constitution and it says all legislative authority is given to Congress. Who does that exclude? The, the executive branch and also the judiciary. They have maintained that the court can simply legislate from the bench. And so now they are so worried that they are going to lose their progressive majority and their judicial activism that they will stop at nothing to make sure that conservative originalists are not appointed to the bench. This started with the attack against President Trump to not even get him elected. And then this started with the whole nuclear option that had to be in place to get Justice Gorsuch on the bench. And then when all else failed, they waged an all-out attack against Justice Brett Kavanaugh that was not grounded in reality, not grounded in due process or truth or fact. Brett Kavanaugh was someone that has been an obvious candidate for the Supreme Court for years because he does have such an amazing record and at the, at the, the uh, D.C. Circuit Court as a jurist who is faithful to the law, faithful to the Constitution, and exceptionally good at conveying that case to other judges. 
In their book, Justice on Trial, about the Kavanaugh hearings, authors Molly Hemingway and Kerry Severino chronicled the attacks that came against a man with a sterling reputation. They were digging for dirt on him. They didn't find any. They were digging for dirt on him when they were attacking him when he was first nominated for the D.C. Circuit. They didn't find any. So he had been uh, through this scrutiny many times before, and I think it was pretty clear to everyone that this guy's squeaky clean. A few years ago, we were very familiar with the uh, Clinton machine's politics of personal destruction. Uh, but then we saw it come to life in the hearings on Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court. All these women came forward claiming he had abused them sexually, and none of the, none of the uh, testimonies were corroborated. Several were withdrawn. Several of the women admitted they'd lied because they were pro-abortion activists and didn't want him on the court. Uh, I think uh, it's time to sue people for this kind of behavior. One of the attacks on Brett Kavanaugh came from a letter Christine Blasey Ford sent to Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein, accusing him of sexual misconduct, which was then leaked to the press. First, they attacked him with disingenuous attacks on his actual record, um, but they were misconstruing his cases and lying about what he stood for as a judge. When that didn't work, that's when leaks, and again, we still haven't investigated, and no one, no one seems to be uh, spending enough time on who did leak this letter from Christine Blasey Ford um, that she said she didn't want to go public. And we have a lot of uh, missing questions as to how that got out, but we, know, we do know that it was brought out in a way calculated to affect the maximum political damage on that nomination. If they can't get the courts to do what they want, they're gonna to try to discredit the courts. As Deborah Katz, who was Christine Blasey Ford's attorney said, we wanna put an asterisk next to his name. We want to discredit these justices and I think they ultimately want to threaten and intimidate the justices. The only way uh, that the court can get away from these, uh, these attacks on their own institution is to capitulate and to vote the way the left wants them to do. But unfortunately, that would be the ultimate uh, betrayal of the American people, of the Constitution, uh, to allow that kind of political influence to dominate the direction the court goes. One of the reasons Molly Hemingway and I wrote Justice on Trial is because we don't want this to become the new normal. Who on Trump's list right now of potential Supreme Court nominees wants to put their family through this kind of, of a uh, confirmation process? I worry that that is part of the incentive that the left has for doing it. That it's not just can we block Brett Kavanaugh, can we put an asterisk next to his name, but can we dissuade some of our best and our brightest men and women on this list um, from being even willing to step up if they're called upon for public service. That would be a real tragedy uh, and, and would be one that has a lot more impact even than Kavanaugh's seat alone. One of the most important issues for voters to decide on the future of America is who gets to choose the judges and who gets to confirm them. Election 2020 is unbelievably important because on the left there's more and more radicalism, the kind of radicalism that I don't think we've ever seen before, and there's been some previous radical periods. I hope is in a restoration of a true constitutional balance where we actually have three branches of government so that the courts are actually interpreters of the law, not creators of the law, and that they respect the legislative branch and the executive branch, and we have three separate branches. I think that will go a long way to protecting our freedom. The president uh, has had the opportunity to uh, commit uh, and follow through on some promises made as, as, as a candidate. You know, so in the, in the case of the courts, promises made, promises kept. Uh, he's had two opportunities and, and has had two great appointments to the Supreme Court. He appointed originalists or, or, who in fact believed in judicial re restraint and who understood the difference between the courts and its benches uh, and the legislative halls of state legislatures and the Congress. In 2020, uh, the, the courts are still uh, in play and voters should actually give the president an opportunity to finish the job. We're facing the most consequential election of our lifetime. 
the left has deployed a number of strategies to literally steal the vote. The new book, Liberty on the Brink, How the Left Plans to Steal Your Vote, exposes the many threats to free elections in this pivotal election year. If they win this time around, uh, I'm not sure we'll ever get uh, the American freedom we're used to back. It's that important. In Liberty on the Brink, veteran journalist Robert Knight exposes the schemes to undermine free elections and steal your vote. They fight voter ID laws. One of the most pernicious attacks on election integrity is the idea of getting rid of the Electoral College. This is a real threat to our self-governing republic. Contact us today to receive your copy of Liberty on the Brink for a generous donation towards the ongoing work of this ministry. The transformation of the United States in the last few decades from basically a God-fearing land into a moral miasma is the result of several factors. But a key one was the misuse of the First Amendment to drive religious expression from the public arena, which turned the amendment literally on its head. The courts used this false constitutional interpretation to throw out school prayers, Bible reading, and Ten Commandments displays. Dr. D. James Kennedy understood the design our founding fathers gave us, and he saw how it was being undermined by this new understanding. As Christians, we are the recipients of a blessed inheritance, and we have a stewardship responsibility to help restore it. Dr. Kennedy explains in this portion of his message, Building a Christian Nation. I would like to speak to you today, not only on the building of a Christian nation, but also the rebuilding of the same. For there's no doubt in the mind of anyone who has studied historically the issue that our forefathers built a Christian nation. But we have been involved in the last 50 years particularly with those who have worked assiduously to tear it down, to destroy the foundations. And now there is a renewed interest and desire on the part of many millions in this country to see it rebuilt again. Let me tell you something that I feel confident that most of you don't know. In 1776, there was not anywhere on this planet a secular nation. Prior to 1776, throughout the history of the whole planet, there had never been such a creature as a secular nation. It had never existed. The first one came about just a few years after our revolution in the revolution in France. Our revolution was based upon God, Theirs was based upon humanistic atheism. And in their revolution, it ended up with blood running in the streets. Tens of thousands of people were guillotined and the whole thing was a gigantic disaster. That was a secular nation. America was founded by people who loved God and trusted in the divine grace of Jesus Christ and desired most of all to make him known to others. We don't have to rely on somebody's opinion. We can hear it right from themselves. As you may know, William Bradford was the historian and governor of Plymouth Plantation. He wrote the only history of the time. He's the only source. He was governor for decades. And he said that before they even left England, they wrote these words about their reason for coming. Was it gold? Let's see. They came here and founded this colony with a, quote, great hope and inward zeal they had of laying some good foundation or at least to make some way thereunto for the propagation and advancing of the gospel of the kingdom of Christ in those remote parts of the world. Yea, though they should be but even as stepping stones unto others for the performance of so great a work. And they have been. 
More missionaries have gone forth from America than any other country in the world. More money has been raised and their great desire has been fulfilled. As many of you know, one of the ministries of this church has taken the gospel to every single last nation on earth. That's why they came, because of an inward zeal and a great hope of propagating the far ends of the earth with the gospel. But then when the pilgrims actually arrived here, as you know, before they set foot on the land, they met in the captain's cabin of the Mayflower and wrote what has been called the birth certificate of America, the Mayflower Compact. And how does the Mayflower Compact begin? Seeing that we need to set up some kind of a secular organization here to run this thing, we'll, no, that's not what they said. They said, in the name of God, amen. That's how America began. Continuing, with these words. Give them a hand. Thank you. Again, they tell us exactly why they have arrived on these shores. Quote, having undertaken for the glory of God an advancement of the Christian faith, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. Having undertaken for the glory of God, and the advancement of the Christian faith. That is why they came, and that is what they did. They advanced the Christian faith. And this continued throughout all of that period. And if we go forward, we can come to the end of the 19th century, when there was a great trial before the Supreme Court. It's called the Trinity Decision and it was held in 1892, exactly 400 years after Columbus made his great voyage. And the Supreme Court of the United States, looking at the question of was this or was this not a Christian nation, the Supreme Court spent 10 years. This is unheard of. Today they give a lawyer a half hour and the other lawyer another half hour. They spent 10 years examining every single one of thousands of documents pertaining to the founding of this country. And finally, they reached a unanimous decision. And they said this, quote, these references in a volume of unofficial declarations add to the mass of organic utterance that this is a religious people. This is a Christian nation. Supreme Court of the United States, unanimously, 1892, the Trinity decision. A Christian nation, according to the Supreme Court, the highest power in this land. This is not a secular, godless, atheistic state, as our young people are being taught in school. Nothing like that. In spite of the continuing efforts to turn it into just that. Our founders built this godly nation that we have inherited, and in the lifetime of virtually everyone here, we have seen it brick by brick, brick being torn down. But it can be rebuilt. It was built, it was built by men, it was torn down by men, it can be rebuilt by men as well. And thankfully, in the last several decades, there has been a revival of interest in the founding of this country and what it was intended to be and what it can be again. And more and more Christians are rising up, whereas before, the majority of Christians didn't even vote in this country. This nation would quickly be restored to godliness if God were seen to be, as we believe Him to be everywhere, in our homes, in our schools, in our work, in our play. We need to see him in the voting booth. It's all about God. That's what politics ultimately is. That's what these belie people believed it was. In the name of God, for the glory of God, for the advancement of his kingdom, 
That's why they came. That's not why most Americans vote. And that's not how they vote. But if you want to see this nation transformed, you begin to see God in the voting booth with you. And God will change this nation. As Dr. Kennedy just explained, voting biblical values is essential to the well-being of this nation. But troublingly, you are in danger of losing your vote. There are numerous ways that those who oppose biblical values are now working to steal your vote away from you. As you saw in today's program, they attempt to impose their will by fiat through the court system, circumventing your vote altogether. They also go to any length to attack and malign conservative judges who might hinder them. But that's only the beginning. Through proposals to ban the Electoral College, so-called ballot harvesting, removing protections against voter fraud, and much, much more, they are working to take your vote away from you so that your voice will be silenced and they can continue to extend their far left agenda. But you and I must put a stop to this. Journalist Robert Knight has written a new book for us that I want to send to you right away as my thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. It's called Liberty on the Brink, How the Left Plans to Steal Your Vote. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. This important new book will show you how the left is working to take away your vote through false recounts, eliminating voter ID laws so that fraudulent votes can be cast, and much, much more. Discover their tactics and what you can do to counter them in this concise, readable, and compelling book. If you're able to give a generous donation of $50 or more, we will send you Liberty on the Brink, plus our special new DVD program, Stealing Your Vote, which includes an interview with Robert Knight, as well as other knowledgeable experts like William J. Federer, Gary Bauer, and Trump legal advisor, Jenna Ellis Reeves. Will we be a self-governing nation or will our votes be taken away by those who will stop at nothing to attain and wield power? so that they can implement socialism, secularism, and advance their agenda of sexual anarchy. The time to stand is now, while we still have a voice. And as you give your generous donation, you will be helping us to spread the truth through our nationally broadcast television programs, our web outreach, and our many print productions. You will be equipped to stand against the schemes of those who would steal your vote. And you will enable others to come to know biblical truth on a host of key issues. So please give generously. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free 877 962 7677 or you can go online to djkm.org. For decades now, a process has been underway to secularize America. It's been driven by the political left who seized the founding fathers and the constitution they wrote as an antiquated impediment to progress. And where does the removal of God from our society get us? Well, a clue comes from British biologist Richard Dawkins, perhaps the world's most prominent atheist. He recently suggested that we should consider a return to eugenics. Dawkins says, eugenics works for cows 
horses, pigs, dogs, and roses, why on earth wouldn't it work for humans? Eugenics, which literally means good genes, is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the science of improving a human population by controlled breeding to increase the occurrence of desirable, heritable characteristics. This aberrant philosophy was central to Adolf Hitler's Third Reich, as well as Planned Parenthood's founder, Margaret Sanger, who said, we should eliminate what she called human weeds of defective stock. This isn't just rhetoric. Sanger once wrote this, we do not want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And since Roe versus Wade in 1973, Planned Parenthood clinics have executed millions of black children in the womb. This also explains why so many Planned Parenthood abortion centers are located near large black populations. Another display of eugenics comes from a CBS News report that Down syndrome births had virtually disappeared from the nation of Iceland. The reason? Well, nearly 100% of the babies diagnosed in the womb with that genetic disorder are now aborted under a government-run healthcare program there. The CBS report also noted serious concerns about the heavy-handed genetic counseling influencing those decisions. The strong arm of government waging war against the most vulnerable in our midst. When God is pushed out of a culture, there is an inevitable diminution of the value of human life that comes with that. We are created by God in his own image, a fact which gives us infinite value. But when that truth is shoved aside or squelched altogether, we become just another animal to be bred or slaughtered for convenience. Atheism, and secularism exact a very real toll in human lives, especially when we let people with those views have control of our health care. Something to remember come election time in November. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. I'm Frank Wright. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Economic freedom has also been slowly and silently been eroding over the years. If, if the social justice advocates, the cultural Marxists get their way, Venezuela is where we're headed. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.